Wow, the final battle just wrapped up. Baku goes back, and Deku took down All for One and Shigaraki using One for All's quirk singularity. It feels like MHA is almost over, probably just a few chapters left. If you're into my MHA stuff, smash that like button and drop a comment for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? It's free and helps me out a ton, so hit that subscribe button now. In the last chapter, we saw literally everyone was doing their best to clear a path for Deku to get to All for One. Even though Deku doesn't have One for All anymore, everyone figured the only way to beat All for One was for Deku to give him one last punch with whatever power was left. All for One tried to use the activation of all of his quirk factors at the same time to blow up all the heroes at once, including, of course, Deku. But because all the heroes and hero students on the battlefield did their best, and they protected Deku, and because Deku knew that the whole world was watching him and rooting for him, in the end, he managed to land a punch on All for One. This epic teamwork had everyone cheering, even Deku's mom, Inko, and the US president. Upon seeing Deku and the other heroes giving it their all in this fight, the U.S. president ordered his subordinates to send every American hero to Japan to help in the fight against All for One. This was a complete reversal of the U.S.'s previous policy, which was not to interfere, because they didn't want to anger All for One. If All for One ended up winning against the heroes in Japan, he could then move on to threaten the U.S. next. Deku's determination and his willingness to keep fighting against all odds despite being an underdog is literally changing the world and immediately shifting the nature of international relations in the world of My Hero Academia in real time. But of course they really left us hanging with a cliffhanger. Deku punched all for one, but we didn't see what happened next. Would Deku win with that punch? Would it fail? Would one for all kick in again when Deku hit all for one? The latest chapter picks up right there, where Deku lands that epic punch on all for one's chest. The villain is confused, because not only did he fail to stop Deku's attack, but he also failed to notice that the body he is currently inhabiting doesn't seem to be using super regeneration. Instead of automatically regenerating every time he takes damage, All for One's vessel seems to be crumbling to pieces. Even though the heroes and hero trainees aren't scary on their own, their teamwork got Deku close enough to land a punch and mess up All for One's senses. Over the past two years, Deku has been busting his butt to master one for all and to crystallize the power of nine different people into a single overpowered quirk singularity. As Deku channels all of his remaining power into that one single punch, All for One's body begins to literally crumble apart, and his various quirks begin to vanish from the battlefield. In a desperate move, All for One uses his quirks to stop himself from falling apart. He uses spikes and tendrils to hold himself together. Deku is clearly not the only one with borderline superhuman determination. For his entire life, All for One has been determined to achieve his true dream to become the one and only immortal and indisputable demon lord. Even now, All for One refuses to give up on that dream, and even though his current vessel is falling apart, he thinks that he can still win if he can transfer his All for One quirk factor onto someone else, either Deku or another hero or hero student on the battlefield. If he can transfer his quirk factor, that will also transfer his personality, and then he can take over that new vessel from within and just keep fighting until all the heroes are dead. Deku yells at All for One to stop and charges in for another attack, but he doesn't get what the villain's up to. All for One wants Deku closer so he can transfer his quirk to him. He opens his arms to make contact and complete the transfer. Even though Deku and the other heroes don't seem to be aware of All for One's plan, but Kururugi senses what is about to happen, and Oboro Shirakumo inside the Nomu starts waking up again. In the last chapter, Kururugi was drained from using all those warp gates, barely holding on. However, in this chapter, he decides he must do one last thing, even if it kills him. Save Deku from becoming All for One's vessel, and free Tamura, Shigaraki, from being All for One's slave. Kururugi, aka Oboro Shirakumo, tells his childhood friend Yamada he's sorry he has to go now, because he has to protect Tamura Shigaraki. Kururugi makes one last warp gate between All for One and Deku, stopping All for One from transferring his quirk to Deku and taking over his body. A crying present Mike says that he knew this would happen because no matter when and no matter where, Oboro Shirakumo always reaches out to help those in need, even after becoming a Nomu. Kururugi says, All for one, please give back Tamura Shigaraki. His friends are waiting. But as he says this, the warp gate between All for One and Deku begins to crumble away, symbolizing the fact that Kururugi himself is crumbling and falling apart. Then, just as the warp gate dissipates, Bakugo flies in out of nowhere and I guess kind of pushes Deku forward to help him attack All for One. Although he also looks like he is trying to bite All for One or something. 
Mike yells for Bakugo to get out of there and get to a hospital, but Bakugo says he flew here using his explosions, and then used Todoroki's ice as a jump board in order to get there. Bakugo says, watch out, or else I'll surpass you Izuku, but then he is just kind of blown away. So, I'm not sure what Bakugo's contribution here actually was other than showing up at an important moment for the sake of the fans. I guess maybe he pushed Deku forward and distracted All for One long enough for Deku to attack him, and so he helped prevent All for One's attempted takeover of Deku's body. Maybe. Let me know down in the comments how you feel about Bakugo's extremely brief comeback. Anyways, Deku says, I'll never forgive you, All for One. But he also says he doesn't think All for One is some monster or evil demon king. Just like with Shigaraki, Deku tries to see the human side of All for One and figure out how he became the bad guy he is. As Deku hits All for One one last time, he says that in the end, All for One is just a lonely guy. As Deku says this, we see the lonely vestige of All for One in the Vestige world, noticing a small flame that he sees as a piece of his brother, Yoichi. The flame starts talking in Yoichi's voice, saying that before moving all the one for all quirk stuff into Shigaraki, Deku left a bit of Yoichi's vestige inside himself. This piece woke up when Deku used the last bits of one for all in his attack. Yoichi's flame says Deku really wants to complete one for all the right way, whatever that means. Surprisingly, all for one's vestige gets super emotional. He's happy that some part of Yoichi is still there and yells at the flame not to leave and to show him his brother's face. The flame says it can't because it's disappearing, but all for one gets more upset and screams that Yoichi is his and has to show himself. Big brother, I couldn't guide you. This is what Midoriya Kun saw. So now he's offering us one last chance. Then, shockingly, all for one says, no, I won't let it happen. I love you. I'm nothing without you. Turns out All For One really did love his little brother. He acted like he only wanted him around because he saw him as his property. But he actually loved him. He just didn't know how to show it. Because of his tough life and messed up dreams, All For One couldn't tell love from control or family from property. It's really sad, and it almost makes you feel sorry for him. Of course, this doesn't excuse anything he's done, but imagine living like that. Imagine loving your brother but only knowing how to treat him like your property and a prisoner. Deku's right. All for one must have been lonely his whole life. If he treated his own brother like this, you bet he treated everyone else the same. Probably never had a real friend because he saw everyone as chess pieces and property. Yochi says it's time for all for one to pay for using people for his selfish ends. Yochi's flame isn't the only one that woke up when Deku touched all for one during this final fight. We see the vestiges of the other one for all users and even the real Tomura Shigaraki's vestige approaching all for one's vestige from behind. Just like I said in my earlier MHA vids, All For One gets hit on two fronts at once. Outside, Deku's attacking with the final embers of One For All. Inside, the vestiges of the former One For All users and Tamura's vestige are attacking. In that moment, being torn apart from both outside and inside, All For One is finally destroyed. At least it seems that way. In Shonen, you can never be 100% sure, but it looks like All For One finally paid for his crimes and disappeared into the void with the last bits of his brother Yoichi, whom he loved but also mistreated. We see a symbolic fist bump between Deku and Tamura as Tamura's body disintegrates. In his last moments, Tamura reveals that after All For One took over his personality, he was about to disappear forever, but his grandma Nana's vestige grabbed him and made sure he didn't. Then Tamura and Deku have one last talk. Tamura says Kuragiri was right. Even after getting his body back and being able to destroy the world, Tamura didn't manage to destroy anything because, in the end, he was just a crying brat. He couldn't even crush Deku's hand. Deku says he fought because he couldn't forgive Tamura, but he kept fighting because he knew Tamura wanted to be stopped. Deku didn't want Tamura's sadness to spread to the world, and he believes Tamura didn't either. Tamura says, huh, then asks Deku to tell Spinner, if he's still alive, that Tamura Shigaraki fought until the end to destroy. Deku responds, and you did it. But in the end, it wasn't the world you destroyed. It was all for one who was destroyed by your stubborn determination. The final page shows Tamura's body dissolving completely as Deku stands alone in the sky where he and all for one clashed just moments earlier. The text says, the conclusion. So, looks like this is it, the end of MHA. All for one is finally beaten, and both he and Tamura Shigaraki are dead. But Tamura got some redemption by fighting all for one in the end. Kurogiri is also seemingly dead and Deku is probably quirkless unless Hoshi pulls another all-for-one revival or some crazy twist. Expect the next few chapters to be an epilogue. They'll tell us what happens after the battle, what happens to the heroes, who ends up with who, and how Japan recovers from the villain war. The American heroes sent by the president will arrive too late to fight, 
but they'll help clean up the remaining villains and rebuild Japan. I wonder if we'll get a time skip showing how Deku and Class 1A are as adults. Maybe we'll see Eri, Koda, and the next generation of hero students at UA. If we do, what do you think will happen? Let me know in the comments. Now that the big fight seems over, will Deku's dad finally be revealed? Will his absence be explained interestingly, or will it just be like, oh yeah, he was away for two years and no one heard from him, but that's totally normal, no big deal. I hope we get a good explanation and it doesn't just stay unresolved forever. If you like this video and want to see more, leave a like to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's free but helps me a lot.